Long ago, two races ruled over Earth, humans and monsters. One day, war broke out between the two races. After a long battle, the humans were victorious. They sealed the monsters underground with a magic spell. Many years later, Mount Ebert, 2010X, yes. Legends say that those who climb the mountain never return. Undertale. And this will be the game that we are playing today. Hello everyone, I am your host as always, the Super Blue Badger. And I came and brought you here to tell you a little bit about this game. And mostly because I want to show people a unique side of it that not everyone always pursues. This is a demo for a game that I am hi highly anticipating and also, uh, let's not watch the scene again. It's a game that I am highly anticipating. It is a game made by... A gent known as Toby Radiation Fox. You may know him for such works in the Homestuck music scene. He has done a lot of work for the Homestuck albums and also does management for What, Com uh, what Pumpkin Inc. around the music side of things. This game was recently fully kickstarted uh, for 10 times the amount they asked. That's 50 grand. They originally wanted 5 grand and instead ended up getting 50. Because you know this shit is quality. Now, let me tell you a little bit more about it. It will be released in spring 2014, or sometime summer, maybe sometime after. And this is a great take on sprite aesthetics, and there are many key words that come to mind. Earthbound, in terms of musical style, graphical style, I think that the game should pretty much just tell it for yourself. But today we're going to be a little girl. My name is Badger and I've always wanted to be a little girl, it seems. Or so Undertale makes me te makes me want to be. My name is Badger, in fact, yes. A little girl wakes up on a a pile a pile of flowers, a pile of flowers, and there's just a crack of light in the sky. Waking up, she realizes that she's in a strange place, no longer called home. So many things to do, so little to see. You can ease around, but there's not really a whole lot to do around here. Obviously dazed and confused, young little girl Badger wanders down the path. This game is a mix of earthbound, bullet hell shooting, and just... It's a little bit twisted. Let's put it that way. And now we come across our first individual. Howdy! I'm Flowey. Flowey the flower. Hmm. You're new to the underground, aren't you? Golly, you must be so confused. Someone ought to teach you how things work around here. I guess little old me will have to do. Ready? Here we go. See that heart? That is your soul. The very culmination of your being. Your soul starts off weak, but can grow strong if you gain a lot of LV. Le levels, you say? What's the le LV stand for? With love, of course. You want some love, don't you? Don't worry. I'll share some with you. That's kind of creepy, man. Not gonna lie. Down here, love is shared through. Little white. Friendliness pellets. Yeah. Are you ready? Move around. Get as many as you can. Well, no. I know what you're up to. Hey buddy, you missed them. Let's try again, okay? Oh, you can try again if you wish, but fuck you! I know your game! Is this a joke? Are you brain dead? RUN! Into the 
bullets. You know what's going on here, don't you? Most people would run into the bullets, and in which our health is destroyed and he tries to kill us. You just wanted to see me suffer. Die. And at the last moment, we are saved! By a gratuitous fireball! What a cretin. Torturing such a poor, innocent youth. Ah, do not be afraid, my child. I am Toriel, caretaker of the ruins. I pass through this place every day to see if anyone has fallen down. You are the first human to come here in a long time. Come, I will guide you through the catacombs. This way. And so our saviour, who is some sort of cow lady, decides to rescue us from the menaces of Flowey the Flower. Why? Who knows? And suddenly, the aesthetic takes a strange turn, gratuitously purple and made of brick, and many autumn red leaves. My good friend H.J. Tenchi actually made a very interesting comparison to this and Deadly Premonition, where red seeds and leaves come into play quite a lot. The shadow of the ruin looms above, filling, filling you with determination, and in which we can save. So we continue on. Welcome to your new home, innocent one. Allow me to educate you in the operation of the ruins. And in a flash, Toriel solves the puzzle for us. The ruins are full of puzzles. Ancient fusions between diversions and door keys. One must solve them to move from room to room. Please adjust yourself to the sight of them. Well, thank you kindly, Toriel. I think I've seen a puzzle before. The game literally takes you for being a little girl that would never know what to do in a situation such as this. To make progress here, you will need to trigger several switches. Do not worry, I have labelled the ones that you need to flip. And she seems to be taking on the role of a tutorial keeper. One that seems to think they know best for us. Press E to read signs. Or Z, if you're British. Stay on the path, but unfortunately you have to go off the path to read the sign! How dastardly. Hmm, she's definitely marked them. The first switch is over on the wall. Pow! Well, thank you kindly. And just to be rebellious! Ha! Oh, no, no, no! You want to press the other switch? I even labelled it for you. Fine. Splendid. I am proud of you, little one. Let us move to the next room. As a human living in the underground, monsters may attack you. You will need to be prepared for the situation. However, worry not, the process is simple. When you encounter a monster, you will enter a fight. While you are in a fight, strike up a friendly conversation. Still for time, I will come to resolve the conflict. Practice talking to the dummy. And now comes the more interesting side of combat in this game. We can either fight to the death against this nameless dummy, or we can act. We can talk to them. We can understand them. We can check them out for their understanding of hit points and such. Or, just, you know, strike up a friendly conversation. You talk to the dummy. It doesn't seem much of a conversation. And Toriel is pleased, because there is a way to take this game on Entirely in passive mode. Every boss, everything that you fight, can be defeated peacefully. Everything. It may seem futile at first, and sometimes downright impossible, but I'm here to show you that it's not. I will show you. And with that, we earn nothing. You don't get XP if you end a fight peacefully. Because you gain no combat experience. Ah, very good. You are very good. And with that, she moves on. Oh, dummy. There is another puzzle in this room. I wonder if you can solve it. It's quite strange how the path branches in several different directions. And it doesn't really seem to be much of a puzzle, really. Oh, and our first wild encounter. Froggit. He is the first enemy. And the first one that we can talk to. Compliment. Threat. These... 
um, dialogue options change with each enemy that you encounter. Hmm. Let's check him out first, because sometimes by checking an enemy, you can tell what's ailing them, and what you should talk to them about to make them willing to not fight you. Life is difficult for this enemy. Well, the f oh. Toriel, fuck off! I have this in the bag! And Toriel gives the frog the death stare until it fucks off. Yes, this game is just that weird. The western room is the eastern room's blueprint. And as I mentioned before, the path is kind of twisty. So now, we can cross this deadly maze of spikes. This is the puzzle, but... Here, take my hand for a moment. Oh, uh, but, but I have the answer... all along. Really? I'm not even controlling this at the moment. Toriel is literally hand-holding us through the beginning section of the game to represent something motherly, something that is too afraid to see you hurt. It's almost like a meta play on the, you know, early game, well, you know, modern games need for tutorials, and a way of developing a sense of motherly tendency from Toriel. Puzzles seem a little too dangerous for now. And if you look at it realistically, come on, what kind of mother leaves a child to walk through a maze of deadly spikes? Would you let your child do it? I sure fucking wouldn't. So, I guess I can understand. You have done excellent- uh, you have done excellently thus far, my child. However, I have a difficult request to ask of you. I would like you to walk to the end of the room by yourself. Forgive me for this. Oh man. Ah, oh, I don't know what to do. All this freedom! And actually, by the f when I first played this game, this actually genuinely filled me with a sense of dread. The change of music, the pacing, the sudden lack of hand-holding was sort of like, wait, I thought this was going to be like the tutorial section. Is there, is there something going on that I don't understand? Is there going to be some random surprise encounter by the end? But nothing really happens. It almost feels like an endless corridor at first. It feels like it goes on forever. Until you come to this pillar. And everything was just fine. Greetings, my child. Do not worry. I did not leave you. I was merely behind this pillar the whole time. Thank you for trusting me. However, there was an important reason for this exercise. To test your independence. I must attend to some business. And you must stay alone for a while. Please remain here. It's dangerous to explore by yourself. I have an idea. I'll give you a cell phone. If you have a need for anything, just call. Be good, alright? And with that, we're finally left alone, despite this sort of strange take on fake independence, so to speak. And for now, there wasn't really a, uh, much reason to look at it, but now we can look at our menu. As soon as I remember how. There we go. Okay, so we have three buttons. Item, stat, and cell. We have no items thus far, so the only things that are really relevant are stat and cell. Stats. Badger. 20 hit points, 10 attack, 10 defense. We need 10 XP for our next level, and our weapon is a stick! A gas-powered stick! And our armor is a reused bandage, of which can be reused once you de-equip it as a healing item. Bam! That is some creative recycling, little girl. What I did realize is that a lot of people don't really seem to find... Well, don't use the cell phone. They don't seem to realize that you have the choice to talk to Toriel. And you can say, whatever. You can say, hello. This is Toriel. You only wanted to say hello. Well then, hello. I hope that suffices. <laughs> and she finds it endearing, because we're a little child. And we can say hello again. This is Toriel. You want to say hello again? Salutations. Is that enough? You can basically bug her on the cell phone as much as you please. And you can tell her a little bit about yourself for a bit of flavor text. This is Toriel. You want to know more about me? Well, I am afraid that there is not much to say. I'm just a silly little lady who worries too much. And you can call her mom. This is Toriel. Huh? Did you just call me mom? Well, I suppose... Would that make you happy? To call me... Mother? Well then, call me whatever you like. It gives you a sort of a strange vibe, like... Does this child... Like, why was she wandering the mountain alone? 
Does she have no parents? Was she running away from something? What happened before the events that happened that took her down the mountain path? And why would she just call some random monster mother? Maybe this is some insight to her silent personality. Who knows? And you can flirt with her for whatever reason. Huh? Oh, uh, <laughs> oh how adorable. I could pinch your cheek. You can certainly find better than an old woman like me. Whatever. I'm not going to comment on that. Make of it what you will. And she rings us back. Hello, this is Toriel. You have not left the room, have you? Uh, no. There are a few puzzles ahead that I have yet to explain. It would be dangerous to try to solve them by yourself. Be good, alright? Click. You can stay in the room before, but it doesn't really do anything. Nothing changes. Playfully clinking, for, uh, clinking, f crinkling, clinkling. Through the leaves fills with determination. It's kind of a cute image, a little girl playing in a pile of red leaves. And a candy bowl that says take one, and we'll take a piece of candy. It's just an item that restores 10 health. You can take more than one, but bad things happen, and it starts to insult you. You can actually watch my friend H.J. Tenchi's take on the version, and I'll lead an annotation to there if you want to watch it. See a more aggressive take on what I'm going to be doing, because this will be an entirely pacifist run. I'm going to be a good little girl. Oh. Well, that doesn't look very safe now, does it? And unfortunately, they drop you through the floor, in which somehow the little girl manages to survive without shattering her kneecaps. And it's an easy puzzle where you come out the other side. Job done. And now we fight our first encounter. So, as you may remember, it said something about dealing with life, I think, last time when we dealt with him. So let's compliment him. He didn't understand what you said, but he was flattered anyway. And he blushed deeply, Rivet. He seems to be liking us. It's a very affectionate emotion. And now he's reluctant to fight us, in which the mercy command comes into play. And what does it do? We have the choice to flee or spare him. We've spared him, and now he, did, he doesn't die. He goes back to his family, and everybody's happy. Ring. Hello, this is Toriel. For no reason in particular, which do you prefer? Cinnamon or butterscotch? After taking the cinnamon challenge one day and choking on cinnamon like it was a hot sandpaper dick, I prefer butterscotch. Oh, I see. Thank you very much. Click. Oh. Hello, this is Toriel. You do not dislike cinnamon, do you? I know what your preference is, but would you turn up your nose if you found it on your plate? Right, right, I understand. Well, actually, I would mind. Although, I guess if it's in small amounts, I wouldn't mind so much. Thank you for being patient, by the way. She still thinks we're waiting in the room. Three out of four great rocks recommend that you push them. I would probably have chuckled at that joke more if the rocks were actually boxes, like Resident Evil style ones. Pow! Puzzle solved. And we get an encounter for our trouble, but we already know how to deal with Froggit. We'll compliment him, and he'll be happy. And then we understand each other a little bit better. So the bullet hell dodging seems to be, oh, a little bit, a little bit easy at first. But as more enemies come onto the screen, we will be encountering their simultaneous patterns overlaying each other at once. And by doing so, we actually, um, like, it makes, it just increases the difficulty tenfold. And as you see, there were, like, layers for up to, like, ten enemies or something. Something ridiculous like that. Could you imagine trying to dodge ten enemies at once? I sure couldn't. But now, this is a puzzle. One that I already know the answer to, I think. Let's see if I can pull it off. Nope! So basically, the puzzle as it goes is that you have to follow the pink path on the layer above. Please don't step on the leaves, as they ask politely. I don't understand why the catacombs are so polite. It's kind of a weird take, because catacombs are supposed to be dark, dangerous, filled with skeletons. But for some reason, this one asks us politely to do things. Like, maybe Toriel has some sort of influence on this section of the catacombs. I didn't actually pay any attention to what I was doing when I, we, went, we went down there, but now that we see the hole... Now I know what we're doing. Didn't you read the sign downstairs? Oh, leaves. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm just a little girl that doesn't know any better. 
and three out of four grey rocks recommend that you push them. Oh, there's a pair of them this time. Actually, that took me a few seconds to realize. And now, we compliment them. And you have the choice, because only the compliment only affects one of the enemies at a time. And as you can see, they are now doubling up their attacks. The smell of mustard seed. I don't remember that flavor text. And now Fro Froggit B will compliment him too. And now they're both flattered. I don't... I believe you can uh, talk to them both. Yes, now they're reluctant to fight us, both of them. And we can spare both of them at once. It's up to you whether you want to um, spare one of them at a time so that you don't have to deal with quite complicated fighting mechanics. Whoa there, partner. Who said you could push me around? Hmm? So you're asking me to move over. Okay, just for you, pumpkin. That's great, but you could go a little further. Hmm? You want me to move some more? Alrighty, how's this? Sigh. What a sense of humor you have, Rock. Hmm, that was the wrong direction. Okay, I think I got it. And with three tries, he's back where we want him. And that was a dick move. Just straight up, that was rude. Mad rude, Rock. Mad rude. And now we have a Froggit and a Whimson. If you act fast, We'll check out the Whimson to see what, you know, we'll see what his, uh, his status says. He has five attacks, zero defense. He's a little too sensitive to fight. I have no choice. Oh, and now this, in combination with each other, they become much more difficult. So if we act and console the Whimson. Halfway through your first word, he bursts into tears and runs away. Mercifully spared. By being too kind for our own good. You could hop to and fro as much as you like, but we're going to compliment the shit out of you. He's reluctant to fight me, so I'll leave him alone. And so far, it's completely possible to leave this every enemy alone. You wanted me to stay there? You're giving me a real workout. Well, that's too damn, too damn bad, but aren't things easier when you just ask? Yes, Rock. I understand. More fighting. Oh, a line of modes moles. I've never fought three at once before. This is interesting. It could be very dangerous. We're gonna skip checking them out this one time, and I'm going to immediately flirt with them. This pile of gelatin really likes it when you wiggle at them. Slime sounds. But they don't seem to be- oh my word, ow! Oh, we're not looking too good here. They wait pensively. We'll flirt with all of them and see if we can take them all out at once. You wiggle your hips, and it wiggles back. What a meaningful conversation. Sexy wiggles. And let's see if we can mercy two of them at once. Oh. Okay. For some reason it took out all three. For reasons I actually don't understand. But let's not look a gift horse in the mouth. This cheese has been here for quite a long time. Stuck to the table. That's kind of gross. But knowing the mouse might one day leave its hole and get the cheese, it fills you with determination. One day, mouse. One day. Let's see if Toriel has anything else to say. I say hello again. Is Toriel? Are you bored? I should have given you. A, I should have given a book to you. My apologies. I want to use your imagination to, to divert yourself. Pretend you are a monarch. Rule over the leaf pile with a fist of iron. Can you do that for me? It's kind of strange because the word monarch comes up again in the future. I can't remember exactly where, but it is plot relevant. Let's say hello again. Hello, my child. Sorry, I do not have much to say. It was nice to hear your voice, though. It's amazing her patience with us. Okay, she doesn't have anything else to say to us. What, but what if we flirt with her again, just to freak her out a little bit? Oh dear, are you serious? And after you said you want to call me mother, you're an interesting child. Gross. Yeah, that's just straight up gross, Toriel. You know, I'm not even going to contest that. That's kind of weird. And now we have a ghost. Are they gone yet? 
This ghost keeps saying Z out loud, repeatedly, pretending it's asleep. Or move it with force? A lot of people would get confused around this point to say that they think that it would it deserves to like you say no if you want to be passive. You want to back away and let it deal with its own way. But no. The passive way is through force. Passive force. And this is Napster Bloke. He's an interesting chap. If we check him out. He's, he's kind of depressed. He doesn't really have a sense of humor. Oh, I'm real funny. It's almost as if he was paying attention. That self-aware humor. Tee hee. Staring into the distance. He looks kind of sad. He's crying at us. And that gives us an idea of what we should do. He needs cheering up. You can have to look a patient smile. <laughs> and he doesn't really attack us. He's not really feeling up to it right now. He looks a little bit better, though. He told him a little joke. <laughs> he cries. He cries again, but he cries a little bit less this time. Cheering seems to have improved Napster Bloop's mood again. And continuing to cheer him on. He wants to show us something. Let me try. I call it Dapper Bloop. And he makes a top hat out of his tears. Do you like it? And he awa eagerly waits our response. You can either slap him in the face, or carefully cheer him on. Oh gee. I usually come to the ruins because there's nobody around. But today I met somebody nice. Oh, I'm rambling again. I'll get out of your way. I was actually very confused at first to the concept of having to use force to be passive. And the concept of cheering someone on when they expect a response out of you. You have to choose carefully of how you're going to respond to them. They may negatively respond to it. 